Okay, so I'm going to tell you about a, a vending machine business I ran for a little bit. Um, I ended up getting probably about 15 machines off of KSL for about 50 bucks a piece. Uh, KSL is kind of a local Craigslist for us. Um, so I ended up selling a portion of the machines and I kept probably six or seven of them for myself uh, to place and uh, to kind of start the business and see how it went. So as far as placing the machines go, when I went around to different businesses, I just made up a little flyer, like a half sheet of paper, that had a picture of the machine that I was going to place in their business, and a list of the candies that I could put in the machine. Um, as far as candies goes, I just chose ones that I could get locally here, like the Costco or Sam's Club or something like that in bulk. So, you know, just a regular peanut M&M's, regular M&M's, Skittles, just your common candies that, you know, everyone enjoys. Um, when I went into the business, you know, just make sure you're dressed in something relatively nice. You don't need to go in a suit and tie, no collar shirt, uh, something that'll prove that you're professional, but at the same time, uh, you don't need to, you know, be something you're not. Don't, you don't need to do like a suit and tie or anything. Like you're not going, you know, for uh, to meet with a lawyer or anything. You're going to sell candy from vending machines. So the first day I went out, um, it was probably... It was a Saturday. I probably spent about three hours out there um, hitting up different businesses. I probably went to about probably 20 or 30 different businesses. And uh, I got into four of them, uh, mostly smaller businesses and the break rooms and stuff. Um, bigger stores like, you know, uh, the bigger grocery stores or Walmarts, they usually have their uh, the whole vending machines contracted out. So the smaller businesses with uh, break rooms and stuff like that is what I got into. Um, you know, computer repair stores, places like that. So when talking to the manager, um, just keep it simple, keep it short, just walk up to him, say, you know, hey, I run a small vending machine business. I was wondering if you wanted to place it in your break room or your lobby here. Um, let him think about it for a second. If he seems kind of iffy, you know, to toss in that you'll uh, donate 25% of your profits to charity. Um, obviously, if you're, if you're going to do that. Um, I personally was doing Doctor Without Borders, um, it's kind of a, a charity that I can get behind. And then uh, depending on their answer, you know, if they said no, call it good, shake hands, leave, no, no hard feelings. Um, if they said yes, then I would show them, you know, they'd have the flyer in their hand and I'd just ask them, you know, what kind of candies they wanted. Um, circle them. I keep that copy, make sure they have a, my number and everything like that just in case they have any questions or anything later. So pretty simple. So as far as the actual money making part of it goes, um, I got my machines used for about 50 bucks a piece. Um, brand new, they can cost anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks. Um, personally, I kind of like the whole do-it-yourself aspect of things. You know, so if the machines were to break down, I'm pretty good at uh, fixing them. So I did make a YouTube video of how to fix the machines, take them apart, you know, adjust the candy dispensers, and I'll make sure to put a link to that um, right now. So go ahead and click on that if you want to see it. It'll open up in a new window. So when you're selling candy out of a quarter vending machine, you got to make sure that every quarter counts. So you got to calculate how much candy is actually going to come out. And I'll talk about that right now. So um, I'll use peanut M&Ms as an example. So if you take a bag of uh, you know large peanut M&Ms, um, usually the biggest size I think is like a 52 ounce bag. In the 52 ounce bag, there are about 35 servings, and each serving is about 18 M&Ms. So if you calculate that out, there's about 624 M&Ms in a large bag of M&Ms, peanut M&Ms. So if you calculate that, um, if you divide, if you divide out the serving size, that's going to fall out of the machine. With peanut M&Ms, the what you want to fall out of the machine is about eight or nine M&Ms at a time. So each time someone puts in a quarter. Eight M&Ms are going to fall out, and so you can get about seventy. So if you take the six twenty-four divided by eight, um, it's going to end up being about seventy quarters worth of M&Ms, which is just about twenty bucks. So if you say, let's see, you spend ten or eleven bucks on the bag of M&Ms, and you're making twenty bucks um, after you sell it, you're making about as much profit as you spent on the M&Ms in the first place. You're making just about ten bucks profit. So you got to make sure that you do that math for every 
different type of candy that you do. Um, trail mix was one that sold pretty well in the machines that I had. So, yeah, as long as you figure out where your money's at and, and you're not going to lose money, um, you got to make sure the machine's adjusted to the right, uh, to the right size. So when I bought my machines, I bought 15 of them because that's how many the guy was selling. Uh, and then I sold, I broke it in half, sold half of the machines and kept the other half uh, to place. So I placed most of them. And then the guy that I sold the first half of the machines to came back and he said, hey, you know, I want to buy the rest of your machines as well. So since I had them already placed, I was able to sell them at a much higher cost than I was able to sell them individually. So even if you don't end up making money with the machines, you know, as much money as you would like to with the machines out of the quarters and stuff like that. Just selling the placement of the machines um, is worth your time because placing the machines is really most of the battle. Um, just getting them in the store. Once you have the location, you know, if it's a good location, you can sit on that and make money for a long, long time. All right, for the legal stuff. The good stuff. So if you're going to, before you start any business, you should always call up your city. Um, just give them, a, give them a ring and see what requirements there are in your city for the business. Um, it varies from city to city and from state to state. Either way, I would recommend setting up an LLC, even if your city doesn't require it. It just makes the whole thing um, flow a lot easier, plus it protects your personal assets. Uh, me personally, the LLC costs about 100 bucks to set up. Just did it myself. Um, all online, like you don't have to go anywhere to do that. It's pretty simple. So business licenses, you know, if your city does require that, um, jump onto that. They can walk you through all those different steps. Plus, if you're selling things, you'll probably need a sales tax ID. Um, and that's pretty simple as well. So most cities have uh, some kind of center for entrepreneurs or small businesses that they can walk you through the different steps. If your city doesn't have one, there's a very good chance that a college or university would have a kind of free advising for that kind of stuff. Um, I live in a college town, so my college and my city has it, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, so if you're gonna set up your machines in a public area, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna need some kind of uh, permit or you know permission from the city to do that. And you know just by calling them, you can figure out what that is. So when I did it personally, um, I didn't really bother with contracts at all, uh, mostly because I knew I wasn't gonna do it in, you know, in a large scale. I only had four or five machines. Uh, placed. So um, just kind of verbal contract is what I used. Obviously, if you're going to go bigger scale or if you're going to be in bigger, you know, restaurants or bigger stores, um, you're going to want to have some kind of contract on there. Just kind of simple stuff. You know, if they didn't want the machine there, they call me up, I'd take it down. You never really have any problems with it as long as I kept it stocked. Um, when I was going around to different businesses, a uh, few a few of the businesses that I went to said they were complaining that they had vending machines, but that the person who owned them would never come to fill them. So make sure, you know, if you are going to do it, make sure you stay on top of it because, you know, you don't make any money when the machine's empty. Right, that about sums it up. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. You know, I do post videos about every week, you know, different entrepreneurial ideas, different entrepreneurial themes, how to make money, you know, just everything anyone can use. So... Like I said, you know, if this helped you, make sure you like the video and make sure to subscribe for my future videos. Thanks.